Hello everyone and welcome back to making a pod-like spacecraft for Kerbal Space Program. In this video we are going to configure the parts that we exported from Unity in the previous video. So I am going to create a new text object and the first thing is CST100 abort and we have to make sure the extension is CFG for configuration file. Okay and I'm gonna do one for each of these so I'm just gonna go through now I've got the interior in a separate folder, remember, and we'll deal with that separately. Okay, having, having made my six configuration files, we're going to drag them into Notepad++. And we are going to take a look at some examples of configuration files to base off of. And we're going to go into the squad folder, parts, and take a look at their parts. The first thing we need, the arrow cap, uh, well, the abort motors we'll save for later. The easier ones are the arrow cap and the cap. Let me just move them forward. We'll deal with them first. And the arrow cap and cap are both like decouplers. And so we need to find decouplers here. We're under structural or utility. I think they are under utility. A decoupler, any decoupler will do. So this is a radio one, but not any decoupler will do. Uh, we want a stack decoupler. Uh, so this one will be fine. I think it's a small one though. Okay, I'm just gonna straight select all, copy, and paste, and then we'll work on it. I don't want the custom drag cube that's down here. I, as far as the, this is for career purposes as a test subject. I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, you can keep it if you want. A toggle crossfeed and module decoupler, decouple are fine. Is Omni decouple? Uh, no. Uh, we'll want it a single... I think we want it just a single decoupler. Let me use one of my own as a reference. Normally I don't copy from the squad ones anymore. I copy from my own. So this is an interstage decoupler, and all I have for module decouple here is ejection force 100 and explosive ID top. I think I'll use this one instead, uh, but we don't need that much ejection force, maybe 20. And we actually want bottom in the end. Now the way the stacks, well we're not going to call it stack separator mini, we are going to call it CST100 arrow cap. Uh, it is a part. The author will be me. And instead of doing this mesh thing, what we do these days is we're going to specify a model, the scale and rescale factor. And so I'm going to come in here and make those like that. And let me just make this clear. So in the game data folder, it's whatever folder you're going to put the part in. And so the part is going to be location sensitive. You have to make sure you've got the right folder location. And so our folder location will be CST100 and the model file will be called CST100 arrow cap and it'll automatically find a .mu. I'm rescaling down to 0.64 for stock. Um, so a four meter part will become a 2.5 meter part. So this will be somewhat larger than 2.5 meters, but that'll be fine. We'll base everything off of 2.5 meters mainly. And the main scale has to be the same as that one. Rescale factor should always be 1.0, 1.0. Uh, the node at the bottom was actually 0, 0. We made sure to put it like that in Blender and we will want it facing down. So this is the x-axis rotation for the node. This is the y-axis, this is the z-axis, and in Kerbal, the y-axis is the up-down. And so this means that the connection is pointing down. The top node is, uh, we don't need a top node for, uh, well, the arrow cap, uh, we want a top node. Then we can connect the cap cap, the little round part to it. So I'll just take the location of the cap and subtract out that I had gotten the coordinates earlier. You'll have to look at your model to get the coordinates for yours, but I am going to say that the top node for the arrow cap is 6689, 
6689 and we do want a top node so it'll connect like that buoyancy who knows uh, tech required I'm not gonna go through where to put it in the tech tree uh, it it can be in coupling or structural I think I'm going to put it into structural there are some decouplers in structural and some decouplers out of structural but it's weird in the in the part structure some decouplers are in utility and some in structural there's this decoupler here but then even ones in structural have decoupling as their category so make sure your category is an actual category in Kerbal Space Program you can't make it up uh, unless you have a community category kit but then you still need to create that category first so it can't be an unspecified category okay the title CSD 100 AeroCap manufacturer I guess Boeing right <laughs> I'm sure there's like a whole bunch of people involved and then the description here uh, they have a very long description I, uh, I I basically do the inverse of the title I uh, like AeroCap for CSD 100 <laughs> I'm lazy uh, the attach rules are probably fine the mass I'm just going to make it uh, 10 kilogram. Oh, well, uh, this is the aero cap. The cap cap will make uh, lighter, but this, let's say 50 kilograms, I don't know how heavy it really is. And so this is pretty okay for it. It's going to separate. Uh, the decouple is off of the bottom. The top node, the cap will decouple off of that. So that's okay. And I don't know about the tech required and all that. I'll just leave that be. So that's how this all looks like. And I'm going to save. I'm going to copy this and we're going to make the cap too. The cap doesn't need a top node. It doesn't attach to anything. It is going to decouple off of the bottom node and its location is still zero, zero. Let's remind ourselves of how this is. So there's the arrow cap and its bottom is at zero, zero. And then if we go back out, there's the cap and its bottom is at zero, zero as well. So yeah. And it's important to judge that by the model that we exported to Unity, not the original model that has everything in the right place. So there's the cap. I don't, I, I don't know my naming arrow cap and cap is leaves a lot to be desired but okay so we need to change the name of the part cap and the model name cap that is correct for the bottom and cap <laughs> okay everything else seems fine we could on the tags add a few more things like if we wanted to say starliner because we don't have Starliner in the name here. So we could add that. That way, if people want to search for Starliner, they will find it like that instead of just searching for a CST100. Uh, for the cap, we'll, we'll have 20. Maybe for the arrow cap, we should have a little bit more ejection force since it's heavier. Okay. And yeah, so those are the easy ones. And then we have the abort motors, which are engines. So let's see what an engine looks like. These are liquid engines. Let's say the LVT-45. They, I mean, they are fairly powerful. So I'm just going to copy this. And again, I'm going to get rid of the test subject part for now. You'll remember that we placed thrust transform. We, we really don't think that there's going to be an alternator attached with this. Uh, the anime throttle, thrust transform, uh, I didn't put a gimbal. I, assuming that, I am assuming that this is not a gimbling thing. There's no fairing at the bottom. We're not doing that. Okay, but it's just a general liquid fuel engine. And so there's the main module engines thing. And... I think that's probably enough thrust for an escape motor on this pod, given that we're going to be scaling it 
for stock initially. So that's the stock amount. Now we want the model to be like we have here. Uh, so I'll cap copy my author name there too. And we're going to change the name of this. And, you know, I have CST there. I'll tag it too, just in case somebody else has a CST100. I'll add the EDB tag to it. Which I do for my parts generally. So, abort. Now we've got a whole bunch of stuff, including the, the stock effects on this engine. I'll keep those. We'll eventually have to do a real plume thing for a realism overhaul. But we can use the same plume for now. And uh, the, the plumes will go with the thrust transform. Now, where do we want the node? Well, oops, let's go back to Blender. Take a look at the abort engines. Um, we just want one at zero, zero, and it'll be a top node. So we don't need this bottom node, really. And these flames, I'll just say zero, zero for all of them. It beats me some of the light. Uh, I don't know what why the orientation of the light's different, but I'll trust them on that. Okay, so basic rocketry engine, fine. So CST 100 abort engines. Again, they have a long description. I'm just going to say abort engines for CST 100. <laughs> Uh, I'll come up with something later. We'll add Starliner. We'll, it, we'll get rid of Swivel here. Or, and Sustain. And say Starliner. And we should get rid of the uh, auto translate things. Because they're not the same anymore. So, in theory, this is okay. But uh, I don't want FX offset at all. I'll just leave that zero, zero, zero. Okay, so we've got that, and now the heat shield. Well, let's find a heat shield. Again, I, normally I would be doing this with, uh, I'm going to be copying the configuration of parts that I've already made because that's more convenient. But we are going into, now where did they put the heat shields? I think is they're in arrow actually. Yes, heat shield. I think size 2, right? That's the 2.5 meter. Yeah, this is a 2.5 meter one. It'll more or less match what our scale is going to be. And here they've done the model version you see here. There's a module lifting surface with lifting surface curve capsule bottom. Well, I sort of left that in on the Lynx heat shield, so I'll leave it in here. And we'll have the same ablator. We'll keep the test subject things, I suppose and all of this other ablator stuff, but I think some of it I would need to configure the heat shield especially to use. There's no fairing at the bottom of it though. And we will add Starliner to the tags. We're going in reverse order this time. Uh, but we'll start going from the top to bottom here. I'm gonna copy this. Change that to HS for heat shield. And I am me. I'm going to copy the location. And say HS. And I'm also going to get the scale stuff. Of the redundant bits. Okay, uh, the stock heat shields have a whole bunch of nodes. Uh, we are interested in the top and the bottom. And the top, I believe, we set at zero, zero. So let's take a look at the heat shield again. Nope, close enough to zero, zero. And then we'll also have the bottom one. 
So we shift right click to get the 3D cursor to the bottom position. It'll automatically snap to the mesh. And we see that the Z axis number is 0.493. So we'll take that. So the bottom is negative 0.493, negative two, that's fine. Um, I'm not making a lift and pressure offset on this heat shield. I don't even know if I want it to be able to jettison, frankly, but uh, we'll keep those and we're going to call it the CSD100 heat shield. But we'll keep the mass and everything. It's technically a little bit bigger than 2.5 meter heat shield, but it's just easier to keep it like this, I think. We could figure out exactly how much bigger it is, but it's not that much different. So, heat shield for CSD 100. <laughs> All right, that's what it is. Uh, so I'll leave the rest as is, and we'll figure out if there's anything wrong with it later. Okay, now the tough ones, the pod and the service module. They have an RCS module that isn't normally built in. Uh, for the sake of my sanity, I'm going to go to the Lynx capsule, my own model, and copy that. And see, it has the module RCS FX. You can copy it from one of the RCS modules in stock, but um, normally they have that separate from the pods. So mod propellant, electric charge, you can see the resource. Again, everything ultimately is copied from some other part uh, that is in stock. You just have to find the module to copy. And you can see the transform name is RCS thruster, just as we had it with the little T. The same thruster transform name here and this running effect name points to this running effect here and we have a transmitter with the antenna power and all that so that's built into the pod and we've got SAS built into the pod and we'll get rid of the reaction wheel for a realism overhaul but we'll have that built into the pod there's a COM shifter uh, for Realism overall these days, there's a more advanced COM shifter that we need to do. This one won't work, but this is the normal descent mode kind of thing. And our internal is not going to be this anymore. Why don't we pull up the internal now? So for internals, I have a special spaces thing. And we have one here. I'm going to copy the configuration for the links internal, just as a reference, and I'll paste it in here. And we're going to take a look at what that looks like. So it's internal.config, and we'd get to name it here. And I'm just going to call it exactly what the folder is, cst100int. Okay, and then we had those seats. Those were the only real props that we had inside the module. And I called it A, B, C, D, and we just named the camera based on that. It just needs to have a little camera name for it. And again, internal seat E. internal seat F and then if you put those other props in like the altimeter and stuff like that those will be listed here too G or raster prop monitor and you're gonna have to figure out how to do that because again I'm a novice at placing stuff like that but an example I think this Orion 3 has some of that stuff uh, here you see the seats but you also see these are the multi-function displays from um, the rest of prop monitor and the specific position that they are in in the cockpit and also the scale. So, and it's labeled prop here for those. And that seems to work. All right, so these are the seats though. We had placed them and that's the internal. So we can copy the internal there and in the pod, we can make that the internal there. Uh, hopefully nobody else makes one. I didn't put the EDB on that this time. I have no idea how much electric charge the pod would consume, but this is where that is and whether there's a minimum crew. A maximum crew is seven. It is a ship. It is a pod. And then we would need the mass, but uh, right now, we'll just pretend that it is exactly like 
the Mark 1-3 pod for consistency's sake. It's just, well, I mean, but there's a crew capacity of 7. Uh, we'll make it, make sure it's more than the, let's say it's 5 tons or something. I don't know how much it's supposed to be. Lander, it's not a lander can. Um, so this is a spacecraft. Seven seats. And we're just going from bottom to top, going space. And CSD 100 pod. It is a pod. And it is in basic rocketry. And let's take a look at whoops, where things need to be as far as nodes are concerned. So pod, select hierarchy. All right. So the heat shield node is at the bottom here, negative 1.161. So we'll say bottom negative 1.161 and make sure it's pointing downward. And uh, instead of shell, we're going to have arrow cap as our special one, arrow cap. And that I had jotted down was at, point, and I hope I'm right about this, five point, uh, 0.5166 and that's facing upward. Make sure that on the arrow cap, its one is facing downward in that location, the bottom node, so that they'll match up. They have to be facing each other. And then the top node here is the one that we want for the docking port. So that's up here. And 1.132 is where we want that. Okay, and so those are the locations. And we need to change the name. Okay, so that should do it, I believe. Uh, depends on you how much electric charge you want. Let's give it a thousand, darn it. And of course, the tech required and all that business. So with that done, we're going to copy and create the service module. Now the service module also has RCS thrusters, certainly has, uh, it should have much more mod propellant. And, you know, we could, uh, well, maybe we don't need that much though. You know, the pod probably doesn't need that much. Take it back. I mean, I, uh, thinking in stock is a little bit difficult, but uh, let's say 50 here. Let's say one, uh, maybe 200 here. It's probably more than we need, but but the abort motors currently use liquid fuel and ox oxidizer, but they could. Oh, and by the way, the abort engines we don't need this heavy. Um, it's a little bit weird though in stock. That means they'll be a little bit OP with the max thrust. I don't know how uh, I'm gonna make the 200 so that's 50 each one, but. Maybe we'll just make them really inefficient to sort of counteract that. Seems fair. But yeah, they are going to be light and like that, but we obviously need more resources because otherwise they won't have fuel from this. So we'll have liquid fuel and oxidizer. Though this is, these will technically only be used for the abort motors, so it is only supposed to be a low Earth or low carbon orbit vehicle. We don't need a reaction wheel in the service module. The reaction wheel was pretty weak in the, uh, to begin with. There's no internal, there's no CM, COM shifter. Um, what it is, I'm going to say there's no SAS, but there might be a way to command it and it'll have low power. And no curb net access, uh, very low antenna range, but it should be able to be controlled remotely, I think. And so these are judgment calls. This will type, we'll say, still say it's just ship for now. And we gotta go SM. SM. And taking a look at in here. Okay. Uh, this surface is what attaches to the heat shield, so we're going to go with that. Looks like it's at 0.55 on the top. Then we need a node for the engines, the abort engines, so we'll say abort. 
Uh, they're probably not all the way there. Uh, let's actually move the engines to the location to the sea. So tab out. And I'll just select abort engines and then select all the service module stuff just for reference. Okay, so now I'm going to move the abort engines to where they ought to be. Right now, they are at zero, zero, zero. Oh, did we not get them? Shoot. Okay, well, they're at zero, zero, zero. I'll move them like this. And we sort of see them poking out the way they should. Uh, let's say negative 0.9 is where the node ought to be. And it should be facing downward. The engine node is facing upward. And then what's the bottom of the service module? Well, we'll just put our 3D cursor there, check the view. And we could want it, uh, let's put the node uh, at the very bottom instead of on this surface, which is indented in a little bit. So negative 1.353. 353 and facing downward. So this is not a pod, this is the service module. But we'll leave it in category pods. Could be just a fuel tank, but it's complicated. And we've forgotten one thing, which is the solar panels. We need a module for that. The service module, it's not got a whole lot going for it. I think we'll just make it maybe three tons. Again, stock numbers, who knows? There's no crew capacity. Okay, so as far as the solar panel is concerned, I'll... What one way of getting it is, of course, from the stock part service module. Uh, sorry, solar panel and electrical solar panels. Uh, these are the extendable ones. We just want the surface mount ones. Radial flat solar panel. I think we'll just copy this module here. It's as these are not the ones that deploy. These are just the flat sol uh, solar panels, and we'll put it here. And note that the transform name is Suncatcher. Its pivot name is Suncatcher. It's not tracking. It's not breakable. Um, these actions won't work, so it doesn't matter. The charge rate should, probably should be higher. Let's just take a look at what the surface area is of the solar panels, actually. We can just select it, and if you have it enabled, and you can enable it under Preferences, Add-ons, and I forget which category it's in, but it's 3D Print Tools, 3D Print Toolbox, enable that. You will have this 3D Print tab, and then you can get the area of things just by clicking that. So it's 11 meters squared. Um, I'm thinking there's no no way it's less than 1.1, and it's probably more than that. But uh, probably we want a buffer on our electric charge consumption here. Let's say 2.2. Okay. So that is our service module. I don't know if there's anything else I'm missing. So next up, we do the next step and this is only for realism overhaul things and let me get rid of the stuff that's a backup file from from notepad okay all clean and we are going to create the realism overhaul configuration and the textures unlimited configuration so ro csd 100 config and new TU CSD 100 config. Okay. So I'm going to copy something else of mine in order to get the syntax right. Let's just continue going with the links. So 
So for the RO stuff, the first thing we need to do is address the part, say that this bit of configuration needs realism overhaul, Ch uh, make sure that it has a tag that says that it does. this is a realism overhaul configuration, so that realism overhaul knows that it is a realism overhaul configured part, configured part. Delete the existing model. Uh, create the model with the full scale instead of the 0.64 scale that we've had. And that's just basically the first bit. So let us get the first bit for each of our parts. And save. Okay, so that's step one, scaling everything up. Step two is the the cap and the arrow cap are fine. They're just decouplers. The uh, we could refine the mass of them, but it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we need to get the right numbers for everything else. The heat shield is a whole business. I have a heat shield here. And you're going to have to look at the realism overhaul configurations for heat shields in the realism overhaul folder to get all the things. But as you can see, it's very complex. I am just going to straight up copy this from my Lynx heat shield. And probably I copied it from an equivalent heat shield in Realism Overhaul already. And so you can see this module beta now has a whole bunch of other stuff here. And a deadly reentry thing if we have deadly reentry, and the amount of ablator. So I'm just going to copy all this stuff that they have. And again, I almost certainly copied it from an existing heat shield in Realism Overhaul. Okay. Now, the capsule, we're going to get rid of the reaction wheel, the liquid fuel and oxidizer we don't actually have in the capsule right now. Uh, but then we're going to put in the configurable fuel tank module. We're going to have an RCS. Uh, we're going to get rid of the existing RCS port and put a new one in with the right stuff. And we're going to have to edit all that. So, I don't know what the power of the RCS ports on CST100 are or what they use, so hold on a sec. Uh, we'll get rid of the reaction wheel, that's fine. We don't have liquid fuel and oxidizer, let's not confuse it. The liquid fuel and oxidizer is in the, in the service module. So we just have electric charge and mod propellant. This is module RCS FX, so that is correct, that is what we want to get rid of. And so we are getting rid of that there. We've added this tank that has the electric charge. Uh, it won't have methane and oxygen. It'll have whatever the RCS ports actually use. Uh, There's a substantial amount of food, water, and oxygen, and we can go with it. And yeah, uh, it depends on whether you think that the water might uh, and oxygen should go into the service module. That's a possibility too. So the service module engine is the RS88, and it's got two different versions, ethanol and liquid oxygen, and MH and NTO. I'm going to assume, this is an assumption, that since they're using the MH and NTO version for the launch escape system, I believe, uh, that they would use the same propellant for the RCS on the service module. Uh, on the, it's not a service module, that's just a type of tank. Uh, on the pod. We should take a look at the fuel mixture that is used in Realism Overhaul for this. So I'm going to go into a Realism Overhaul folder. So in the Realism Overhaul folder we have engine configs and we would like something that has this MMH and NTO fuel mixture. They have RCS configs in here. RCS config. So we just want the propellant mixture between MH and TO that they use, and it looks like it's just 0.5.5. I'll go with that for now, unless I have some reason to say otherwise. So, MH NTO. This is a fairly common thruster power. Uh, it is possible to have uh, double or even quadruple that. And but I have no information on the exact thruster power on Starliner, so you guys can tell me if there is anything different, but I'll leave it as is, it'll be serviceable in this way. So, 
we will go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and we're not expecting super powerful things. And this is just the pod's RCS. It's only used during re-entry. So we'll leave it at that, and then we'll create equal measures of MH and NTO here. I'll just copy an existing tank here. Two of them. Note that the carbon dioxide waste and wastewater start out with amount zero since they're just containing those things that, of course, with the RCS fuel, we want actual amounts. Um, let's just make it around 100 liters for now until I get refined information. And they need to be in the same ratio that we have on the RCS port module down there. Since we are assuming this RCS module, we should have the same RCS on the service module. And by the way, this 104 newtons is what it is, is per port. So keep that in mind. And we have quite a lot of ports on here. So what is the maximum volume that we could have in this service module? Well, we have a collider here that fills most of it. So we can go back to the 3D print thing and check the volume of this. And we find out that the volume is 13.25 meters cubed. That's the absolute maximum. We've got engines fitted in and everything, so it's much less than that. But the maximum, maximum, let's say it's that, uh, a quarter of that. And that equates to uh, about 9,937 9, liters. So, okay, uh, we'll set that as the maximum, but we probably won't use it. And so we're going to copy this module fuel tank. And we're going to paste it into the service module. And right now, we're just assuming that the service module is just the fuel, and maybe some electric charge. Now it's just straight MMH and NTO, but we'll say 9,900 here. This is just an assumption. Which means that we could split it. Um, let's just say we're using 9,800 for simplicity's sake for the MMH and NTO. So that'll give us 4,900 of each. I'm being very round here. And we have the same RCS down there. Um, we can potentially give it better efficiency, but I'm going to leave it be for now. And we will have the RS88 engines. So that's the abort motors. We need to change those. We haven't done that yet. So let's find ourselves a good engine configuration for uh, probably the engine configs in here are not what I want. I think I'll uh, pick on my favorite, nope, not that, uh, my Gemini lander engine. Uh, it's not MH and NTO, but so we want at module engines. We could just delete the existing module though. But we'll do it this way. So it points to the any module engines, whether it has, the asterisk means whether it has something after that or not. And in the abort configuration, we just have module engines. So it doesn't have anything after that asterisk. Uh, min thrust and max thrust are the same. And it's 176.6 kilonewtons. In this case, it is the sum of all the nozzles. So that's different. And MMH and NTO. And they have it really close to 0.5 each. We'll just say exactly 0.5 for now. Um, atmospheric curve uh, for the engines. We For the abort motors, we really want it to have a good sea level specific impulse. And that's what this number is. For the RCS thrusters, we didn't really expect a high sea level specific impulse. But... And, you know, to be fair to the RCS thrusters, maybe we should improve their efficiency a little bit. I feel bad making them 290. 
let's just say 300. Okay, and so we'll probably leave the numbers be on here. College, um, there are abort motors, let's just say it's false. Pressure fed, uh, pressure fed is fine uh, because we are using service module tanks here which are pressure fed. So it should read okay on that. Ignitions, infinite, I mean, really probably only one. And it's using electric charge as an igniter, which is fine. So that probably is okay for the abort motors. And last, uh, we might want to configure the solar panels. Now I see that the solar panels have 2.9 kilowatts of electricity. Uh, we don't need to mess with that. We'll just say it's charge rate 2.9 and we don't need to worry about that in the RO configuration, I think. Which means that I think we are basically done until we tested it in Kerbal Space Program and we need to adjust how much we actually have in it as far as the propellant capacity. We will leave everything be here. And we are going to turn finally to the Textures Unlimited configuration of it. And I will once again take a look at my links. The first thing we need to do is make sure that it knows that we want to use Textures Unlimited. So that's this first statement here. And if you find some other Textures Unlimited configuration, including on my mods, you can just copy that. And then we have these shader blocks. And so for each of the parts, what we can do is specify whether we want any metallicness to it. Uh, for most of the pod, we probably don't. Uh, one part that we definitely do want is the abort motors, which are shiny little engines. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste. Copy the model name, uh, paste, and so this is the metallic shader, a PBR shader, and we gotta make it a little bit more metallic and smooth. There's also the steel portions of the pod, and we don't want the rest of the pod to all look metallic, but we just want the steel portions that we had. And the way we specify a particular part of the model instead of the entire thing is to say mesh equals under the word shader here. So under shader, mesh equals, but we want a different mesh. What we want is the, the parts that were steel and have the steel material and that's the pod.001 bits. So we'll just type in here. It has to be the mesh as it is in Blender. So pod001 will get that shininess for the metallic shader. And we could have less metallic for some other things, but I think we, I'm just going to specify the stuff that I want metallic, and there isn't anything else, I think. We could uh, go for the little bits on the seat that are metallic, but um, maybe the RCS ports, sort of metallic, pod RCS, we could make that way. Then we could do the same on the service module, but I think I'll leave it be. Okay, but that's how you make the textures unlimited blocks that add the metallicness to the textures since we can't do that very easily exporting it straight out of Substance Painter since the KSP shader doesn't take the metallic maps. Okay, so I think that just about does it for configuring the pod, but usually there's something wrong that happens at this point when we actually put it into Kerbal Space Program. Everything has ended up in a little folder. Uh, we have this CSD100 folder, and we're just going to copy it into Kerbal Space Program. We're going to get rid of the backup files. And yeah, 
I'm going to get rid of those two. We're going to copy it into Kerbal Space Program and see what happens. So I'm going to do that during a live stream during the launch of CST100, hopefully, cross your fingers, that actually launches. And we'll see how that goes. And I'll do the fixes during my live stream on Twitch. So anyway, that is configuring a spacecraft for Kerbal Space Program. And hopefully that was clear, but I don't know. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.